Thinking about using your credit card to jump into real estate? It's a tempting idea, especially with this sizzling property market. But here's the deal. While it might seem like a shortcut to real estate riches, there are some serious things you need to know before taking the plunge. Hey guys, welcome back to Finance Homefront. I'm Bev. Today, we're diving into a topic that's buzzing. Investing in real estate using a credit card. Sounds intriguing, right? But hold up, there's more to it than meets the eye. Stick around as we unpack the potential and pitfalls of this strategy. But first, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell. We've got loads of financial insights coming your way. Now, let's get into it. Buying a house with your credit card isn't as straightforward as grabbing lunch or a new TV. First off, most credit cards won't have a high enough limit to cover the whole home cost. Even if you do qualify for a sizable credit line, there's another hurdle. The folks handling the deal, like the title company, usually need payment in certified bank funds, not credit card payments. You can't just swipe your way to a new home, but your credit card can still be a handy tool for real estate moves. So here's the deal, if your credit limit is solid, you can use a nifty move called a cash advance. It's like turning your credit card into actual cash for your real estate plans. Quick tip, watch out for the fees. Usually three to 5% of what you're grabbing. And the interest rates might be higher than your usual card rates, kicking in right away. Another strategy, use your credit card for all the extra real estate stuff. If you're fixing up a budget-friendly place for future rent, your card can cover the costs for contractors and materials. Just keep an eye on any sneaky fees and interest rates and you're good to go. Now for the savvy rewards collectors, there is a cool move. Cash in those hard-earned points. Okay, the cash value might not be as fancy as a travel spree, but it can fund your next property move, especially if you've been racking up points on both business and personal cards. So let's talk about this kind of unusual move, using your credit card for real estate. Surprisingly, it's got some perks. First off, speed. If you're itching to jump into real estate but don't have a mountain of cash, your credit card can be your saving grace. You skip the waiting game and dive straight into the investment scene. Then there's the money talk. Traditional home buying comes with a bunch of fees. Think origination fees, appraisals, and escrow fees. But with a credit card move, it's like cutting down on the extras. Fewer closing costs mean more dollars in your pocket. And here's a cool twist. Using your card for real estate extras can turn into a rewards bonanza. Say you're fixing up a place, slap those renovation costs on your card, and watch the rewards roll in. It's like doubling the benefits, investing in property, and stacking up rewards. So yeah, using your credit card for real estate might not be the usual path, but it's got its perks. Quick entry into the game, fewer fees on the table, and bonus rewards. Not bad for an unconventional move, right? Using a credit card to invest in real estate comes with significant downsides to consider. Here are some drawbacks if you're thinking about buying rental property with credit cards. Difficulty in direct use. You can't simply use a credit card to close a real estate deal. You likely need a credit card cash advance, which may come with lower limits, higher APR, and additional fees. High interest rates. If you resort to a credit card cash advance, you'll face high APRs compared to other financing options, like personal loans, which generally have lower interest rates. Increased risk. Credit cards allow immediate purchases even without the cash on hand. However, this convenience comes with the responsibility of repaying the amount, regardless of the investment outcome. Repaying over time can lead to substantial interest charges. After weighing the pros and cons, consider these factors impacting your real estate investment. Additional funding. Assess if your credit card limit is sufficient. If not, you may need additional funding sources. Local real estate market. Understand the local market. Choose a desirable property and evaluate renovation needs for profitability. 
Repaymentability. Treat your credit card as a short-term tool, planning to use profits to repay the debt promptly. If using credit cards doesn't align with your strategy, explore other options. Personal loans. With strong credit, personal loans offer higher limits, longer repayment terms, and generally lower interest rates than credit cards. Personal savings. Avoid borrowing altogether by tapping into personal savings or waiting until you've saved enough to invest without incurring high finance charges. Be cautious when using a credit card, which is basically borrowed money, to finance investments, especially in real estate. Following key credit card guidelines such as managing your credit usage and paying off your credit card bills entirely can prevent you from getting into debt while pursuing your investment goals. I want to emphasize that I'm not a financial advisor. The content in these videos is meant for educational purposes and doesn't constitute financial advice. Investing always comes with risks, and even though you can take steps to minimize them, the responsibility for your investments lies entirely with you. Please make sure to do thorough research as I'm sharing my opinions, and there are no guarantees of gains or losses on investments. Your financial decisions are crucial, so take the time to understand and consider your choices carefully. Alright, let's wrap up this credit card and real estate adventure. So, we've covered some pretty nifty moves on how to sprinkle a bit of credit card magic into your property game. Remember, using a credit card to fund your real estate venture is like taking a detour on the investment highway. It's not the usual road, but hey, it's got its own set of advantages. In the end, using your credit card for real estate is like adding a little spice to the investment recipe. It might not be the classic move, but if you're up for an adventure and know the lay of the land, why not give it a shot? Now, here's the million dollar question. Have you ever considered this unconventional path to fund your property dreams? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Did you find these tips helpful or do you have your own tricks up your sleeve? Let's start a real estate conversation right here. If you enjoyed diving into the world of credit card wizardry and property plays, give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that notification bell. That way, you'll be the first to know when we drop more money-making wisdom. Until then, happy investing and remember, the property game is all about making those smart moves. See you in the next one!